Hey, it's Frank Whitmer of Brady Precision here today to talk to you about the optimizer unitary and BAV controller and utilizing the Modbus RTU-485 port uh, for expanding your I.O. and other uh, devices as well. So let's go ahead with the some information first to get a little background on it before we actually go live into a into the uh, workbench. So basically what you have is um, the the optimizer and the unitary control optimizer unitary and VAV controllers have a 485 port on them that allows for Modbus RTU and the intent of that port is to extend um, the ability to have other devices connect to it such as IEQ sensors uh, VFDs meters and also IO modules uh, so the and the intent of this this uh, video is to discuss the adding I.O. modules to this uh, controller so we can uh, extend the I.O. for bigger applications. And basically every uh, unitary NVAV controller has this 485 port which is dedicated to Modbus RTU. Um, it can be anywhere from 1200 to 57.6 baud uh, for communications. And the recommendations are to have a max of five devices on that bus and also 155 points. Now this isn't a hard, fast number, but that is the recommended uh, limitation for that port. The Modbus RTU settings you'll find underneath the control manager within uh, the IRM program in the station and on each of the controllers. And by default, the baud rate is set at 19.2, and you can see all the various baud rates that are available up to 57.6. And you can choose the Modbus polarity, odd, even, or none, none being the default. And the Modbus stop bits uh, would be either one or two, and the default on that one is one. And you'll see here the control manager view, and down towards the bottom is where you have the settings for that. So, on the uh, controllers, there's times when you need to pick up a few extra points, whether monitoring or for control. And this port will allow this to happen uh, within the controller. So you can utilize, as I say, this 485 port and actually make it a dedicated I.O. network and not throw them out on the back net bus itself and bring them in that way. This way, it's a dedicated port on the controller that you can use for your I.O. Um, as I said, you could have up to five devices on there. And a couple nice things uh, with doing it this way, the Modbus devices do not count towards the JACE global capacity. Um, they just get brought in there, and it's the points that once you create a backnet point and expose it as a proxy point within the station, within the points folder of the controller, that's when it goes towards the global capacity for points. But for devices, it's not at all. For points, it's only if you bring them in as a proxy point into the points folder within the station. How does it work? Well, in the, um, the Honeywell IRM control palette, you're going to find a Modbus folder, and within there, there is a Modbus device. Basically, you're just going to take that device, drop it in on your application, and from there, you will be able to go to a Modbus configuration screen, which allows you to add points, writable and read-only type points. Keep in mind, Modbus is not like BACnet. You do not have the ability to do any kind of discovery. So you need to have documentation available from the manufacturer so you know what registers um, you can use to bring points in, whether they're read-only or writable. And that's all done through this Modbus configuration view. Now, what we've tested uh, with these controllers has been the, uh, the ISMA I.O. modules. They have a full line of I.O. Uh, devices that are capable of talking Modbus RTU. And we went ahead and pre-built a couple of templates for two of their devices to allow for um, the extended I.O. on the controllers. And we picked the, uh, the Mix 18, which is an 18-point mix of I.O., and also the, uh, their 8-point uh, module. And as you'll see here that the mix, you know, it's 18 points. And in my application I created or in this template, we have about 44 backnet points there that can be used for monitoring control. And remember, they don't count towards that point, the global capacity, unless they're brought in to the points folder of the controller for the station. 
Um, so we built this template just to make it easy to be able to extend the I.O. instead of having to go in and figure out how to program points in Modbus to bring them in. And we'll go through that live um, as well. On the ISMA control modules or these I.O. modules, uh, they're very easy to configure. And I have a screenshot here of one. And you can see that it's dip, slit, dip switch selectable for the baud rate and the protocol. And then there's rotary switches in there to do your Modbus addressing. So super simple for that. And one of the nice things about this product is if you connect through their mini USB port, that will power the device. And they have a free configurator tool that you can use to configure your inputs and your outputs to be able to be, like for your inputs to be 10K type 2, type 3, 20K NTC, those type of things can be done with this tool ahead of time. And then powering up through that mini USB port makes it quick to be able to set it up and then you can send it out to the field. Or you can wire it up and power it up with normal 24 volt AC or DC and then go in and bring it into, the, uh, into your controller. And this is just a list of some of the uh, I.O. modules that are available from uh, ISMA. Uh, they've got quite a few to choose from and a nice mix of I.O. So depending on what your I.O. mix is that you need, if you just need inputs, you can add just inputs. If you need outputs, you can add just outputs or have a mix. My pre-built templates that, uh, that we have available, um, here's a screenshot of a layout, and I added some notes to it to show. And there's the Mix 18 version and the, uh, the, 4U, the 4UI4 output with handoff auto. <clears throat> I've made that into a the, the template as well, and I'm showing where you make your connection. So basically, I have it set up that you have your um, commands going to it to command your outputs, whether it's digital outputs or it's an analog output. You have the ability to command there or analog outputs as digital if needed. Um, and then the outputs of my compositive compositive folder that I created, you can pull in your inputs from the control from the uh, I/O device whether they're universal inputs or digital inputs. Just something simple to be able to drop in, have everything already configured for you, and just add your logic to those devices. You can see I have three controllers. I've got a Spider 7 VAV, <clears throat> and I have two unitary controllers, a T1L and an IP controller uh, in there. And from that, we can go in and look at each of the applications. So if I go to a unit, the unitary IP controller, this one's blank. All I have listed in there or, or added to it was just the, uh, the, the physical I.O. And I just want to show how you would configure the Modbus and also be able to add the Modbus device and build it from scratch. So first we would go and let's look at the control panel, or I'm sorry, the control manager. And within there, down towards the bottom, you'll see where you have your baud rate. And we're going to be using 38.4, and it's going to be no parity and one stop bit. We would say save for that. Now our, the port is set up to be able to bring in a Modbus device. So from there, I can go to my periodic program folder. And what we're going to do is we're going to add that device from the palette. So we go down to the bottom of the Honeywell IRM control palette. We could go in there and select Modbus device and drop that on the screen. And right away, it comes up and says, hey, it's a zero address. You need to change that. So if we go into the prop, we could double click on this device and it will bring up the um, configuration view for Modbus. So within here, we can say, okay, I want to use address two. And then depending on the, the way that the device is set up, and as I mentioned, you need the, the Modbus register list from the manufacturer so you know the correct information to put in here. So it's trial and error. It takes some time to build it. But as I said, we made some templates up to make it easy to add I.O. to the controllers. Uh, but from there, you can do read points, you can do write points. So if you add a read point, so let's go here and add, we'll add a fictitious one. We'll call this one, um, this would be discharge air temp. And we'll say the register is 40,001. It's a holding register. Uh, so we'll change it to holding. I'll let it work as fast operation. Scaling factor, I'm just going to make it a zero for now. That's going to, depending on it, that's to shift the decimal place to the right or to the left to get the right scaling. And again, that's the registry list that you, register list you need to look at from the manufacturer. Um, and then we're going to go over here and say that it's a integer 16-bit. And we say OK. 
and you'll see the point is added here. We can go back and edit it. But if we go back to our application, this, you have to save that. You'll see now that we have a point in there that is the, uh, the Modbus point that we can now link to our logic in the controller. Um, so you can double click on it and we can see how that is set up from there. You can make changes here or you can go back, double click on the Modbus device and go through there to, um, to go ahead and, and make changes to the, uh, the parameters for it. You can go and add more devices or more points. You can add writable points as well. And then once you're done, you would come back and obviously go in, do your action, teach the controller, and you should be on your way. So that's how you would add it from scratch and build it. That does take quite a bit of time. Uh, so what we've done was we've created a template. And if I go down and I look at my template sidebar, again, that's just going up this window sidebar and template you would select that and open it up here and there is a template folder underneath the user home and that's where you would have you would put the uh, the templates that you want to uh, work with so from here I can scroll down and I have a couple I created called isma for you 40h and isma mix 18 so what we can do and this time we're going to go in and say okay I've got this and this is a standard CVHU uh, application template that Honeywell has created and I already have that preloaded in there and downloaded. So first thing we want to do, go to Control Manager. Let's make sure there. I want to say I want immediate for my teaching mode. 38491, that looks good. We go to our periodic program. I've got my whole application here. What we'll do just as a simple test is um, we'll just take a cooling output and we'll connect it to a module. Say we, need, we ran out of digital outputs, we want to add one, so we're going to put it on that module. So what we'll do is I'll go back over here to my template and I'll take my 4 u 4 I'll drop it on and you'll see then the compositive folder or um, component will show up and it makes it very easy to turn around and connect your digital outputs and your, um, your uh, inputs as well to your application. So in this case here, I can do something real simple. I can go in and say, okay, I know I have one here. I have, a, I have a 10K sensor on UI1, and I have a switch on UI4. So I'm just going to take my, my switch on UI4, and I'm just going to bring it around just to show the speed, um, the digital input status from my I.O. module. I'm going to drop it over on my digital output command, and if I go in here and I switch it back and forth, it should take and put that in there. Once we do one more thing, we have to make sure we download. So we go back here and go through, they get down back to our IRM program, go in here into our action teach to controller. So we'll teach to the controller. We'll let that go ahead and put that in place. Now this application that we're showing here that's just in the project or in the station is actually in, um, we're pushing it to the controller. So it looks like I need to go in and I'm going to clear my controller for our, we'll try a full teach and see how that works. I may have to clear the controller because of the state it was in from the last time I worked with it, but we shall see. We can go back down here and look at our jobs, uh, our job service and see where we are with that. So basically we want to download this controller and we can do some testing from there. does take a little bit of time to do a full teach, but when it's all said and done, we'll be able to uh, work with this controller. Okay, so now I see it does say it's in sync at the top. It is successful. So now we have our controller downloaded. I can go over here, refresh my node, and the check mark next to Control Manager. It is connected. I'm looking at the RS-485 LED on the controller, and it's green, meaning that the Modbus 485 port is talking to the controller or to the I.O. module. So what we can do now is take a look and say, okay, I mentioned UI1 has a 10K sensor. It's reading 72 degrees. That's good. DI status on UI4 is false. I'm going to go ahead and flip the switch, and we should see that the it pulls in. I just heard the relay click and turned on the output. If I go, let's wait for the, um, 
for the IRM program to, or the IRM tool to update the values on the screen. Click it the other way and wait for it to update. The action occurred immediately. I can either the digital output for relay pull in every when I change the uh, the action on here. So I can go ahead and switch it back. And it just went back off again because my in status went back to false. We can go back over into the IRM program property sheet and take a look at the update rate we have. So I want to go to fast so we can see the uh, update rate on the application. Go a little bit quicker. So let me go back here and we can see here we can go back. I'll hit that switch again and expect that it'll be a little quicker to display for us. And then for some reason it is not displaying the the changes. Oh, there it goes. Okay, it went active. We're true. And then I can drop it back out again. And it goes back off. So that was just dropping that on there. The points are there. We're good to go. We can take the temperature if we wanted to, and we could use that in the application, any of the inputs there, the and then the outputs going to it. And that's simply... We have added I.O. for your application. Now, if you want to go a little further, a little deeper, I know this is running a little long compared to what we usually do for our videos, but I think it's important. Let me go ahead underneath the IRM folder that I created uh, for this, for this template. We'll move this guy out of the way. There's that Modbus device that I showed a little bit ago. And if we double click on that, you can see all the points that I created, uh, writable and read only. So you're able to see what, how I created each of those inputs with their registers on there. Um, and then you'll notice also within here, I've got BACnet points available for each of these pieces of I.O. on the controller. Just to make it simple to be able to then expose these to be brought into the points folder within the controller to be able to be used back in the station, in the, in the JACE. Um, you don't need to bring them in. If you don't bring them in, they don't count towards that point capacity, as I had said, or the, the global capacity, but uh, they're there to be able to uh, override and uh, read the values as you're going along. Um, and we can get in deeper here, and you can actually see how we did the commanding of the digital output bits from a, the binary coded decimal value. Uh, all that logic's there. It's it's open. You can, you can learn from this. It's a great way of uh, figuring out how to uh, bring other objects in. There are other I.O. objects or other I.O. devices out there that you could utilize with this, along with, as I mentioned, IEQ sensors, VFDs. Um, uh, you can do other, other devices in there, uh, especially, like I said, I.O., that's the main thing um, that's, that you can do to extend uh, these controllers. And um, with that, I think that was everything I needed to cover. If you have any questions or have any comments, please let us know. And um, the two uh, templates that I created, I should mention, BP Tech Center, that's where they're going to be. And uh, they can be downloaded from there. You can play with them, tear them apart, learn from them. That's the main reason for them is one to make it easier to use them, but also something to learn from on how to use that Modbus uh, RS-485 port on your optimizer unitary and VAV controllers. Uh, that's it for now. See you next time. Thanks. Bye.